start talking to our children at a younger age about what could happen, uh, when it could happen, how it could happen, uh, why it could happen, and what you do if it happens. Right. You got to be uh, uh, we have to start being more open and receptive to having these conversations with our kids. And, you know, a lot of times parents are so busy nowadays. It's crazy. Right. Because it's like you have to find a balance. And you are busy as a parent. And that's why it's so important to have a two parent household, because you got to have a team. You know, ma marriage is not about, uh, or not even marriage, just having a, a relationship or having a partner, right, is uh, very important because if you have children, you got a teammate, right? That means if I'm, if, if I'm, uh, you know, uh, picking one kid up from school, <clears throat> you can pick the other kid up from the other school, right? Depending on the ages. You might have one in daycare. You might have one in high school, right? They get out at the same time. Who gonna pick who up if it's only one parent household? So that's one stressor right there if you a single parent. So we got to start doing better. We got to do better and, you know, do it for the interest of our kids and for ourselves too and for our community because this is how we change things. So we could see that Jessica's life changed drastically when her mom became a single mom, right? Um, so yeah, so she started acting out. So we could say at 15, right, middle school, high school, she didn't feel safe. She didn't have nobody, nobody to talk to. She couldn't communicate with anybody. She didn't feel validated as a as a, a young young lady and things like that. You know, um, sometimes with single parents, they do the best they can. But again, you need support. But how can you? Uh, you don't even trust other people now to to take care of your kids, right? You know, you could think about different programs to put them in. You know, there are programs to kind of help them navigate, uh, you know, middle school and how they're feeling at that time and things like that, right? Um, but you just got to be a more uh, involved parent, be involved as much as you can to know what's going on when your kids come home from school. Don't let, you know, don't just have them put their boot bag down and they go and play and do whatever. Then they eat, then they take their bath, whatever, and then they go to bed. No, we're going we gonna to talk about some things. You know, my kids, what I do when they, when they come home, I give me those book bags. I look in them book bags. Look, let me see what's in this book bag, you know, from what I put in there this morning. Let me see what's in there now. I look through all the folders, make sure I got all the information, right? Then, you know, okay, we're going to do our homework. Do our homework, all this stuff, right? Then, okay, when we eat dinner, we're going to eat dinner together. Because when we eat dinner together, what does that mean? That means no tablets, that means no phones, no electronics. And we're going to start asking some questions, right? I don't care if you got a... Uh, a question of the day. I don't care what it is. You've got to start uh, opening that line of communication, right? And get savvy, you know, with some of these questions. Because sometimes with teenagers, they don't want you, when you ask certain things, they think you, um, you know, like you weird or whatever. Because <laughs> you're the parent. They're like, oh, my mom, why you ask me that? Ugh. You know, <laughs> so you got to get a little savvy and be a little hip like them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes you might say, you know, with younger kids, my kids are younger, you know, so I ask them, well, you know, what was the best part of your day? Like, what did you do? Um, tell me all about it. Like, what happened? Oh, oh, you went to art class today? What's your art teacher's name? You know, are they nice? You know, what was what was so good about art class? You know, oh, uh, what about your day didn't you like so much? Oh, well, why didn't you like that? Um, you know, you know, ask different things. Uh, what did you did you guys go to recess today? You know, did you meet any new friends today? Who did you sit with at lunchtime today? You know, things like that. Um, so that way you can open the lines of communication. That way, when they do need to tell you something, you know, they they okay with talking to you. And then too, when your child tells you something that you are alarmed about. Don't freak out. It's like you might be freaking out inside, but if you freak out in front of them, they're going to think that they can't tell you anything, 
right? So, you know, they tell you something that's alarming. Okay, let's sit down and talk about it. Let's let's figure out, you know, what we can do, who we can tell. Um, you know, you know, what do you think happened? Or, you know, what do you think we can do about this? And it may not even be anything that's crazy, right? It could just be something simple that they don't really know how to solve. But it's good that they're coming to their parent to say, well, mom, you know, some something wasn't really good today. Like, you know, my daughter, she's young, you know, or I have young kids. So she might say something like, oh, you know, I lost my barrette or something like that. Oh, okay. Where do you think you lost it at? You know, which color, which color barrette was it? You know, where did you leave it? Okay. Well, maybe the next day, you know, tomorrow we can ask your teacher to see if they see it. If not, it's okay. Right. So you've got to Again, keep those lines of communication open with your kids so that they know that they can come to you and talk about anything and that you are going to be there for them, right? Um, let's see. Oh, so then to the situation, oh, Lord, that happened. Because I don't want to get into all of this, just a few things. But the situation ugh, that happened uh, the, the night with Charla, right? So she said that when she... Got into that car with all of them dudes. First of all, this is this is the part I missed. She said the mama said that he could come pick her up, but maybe the mama didn't know he was in his 20s. The mama said he could come pick her up, and he but he had to come upstairs and give his license plate number and all this stuff. If you got to do all that, she can't go. She can't go. For what? Because to me, if you're trying to get the license plate number, the, the name of the car, who he with, who came with, whatever, that means you taking down information to tell the police in case something happened. If you feeling like that, your baby can't go because that's your baby girl. She cannot go. And I don't care how mad she get. Baby, you can stump to the heavens. You hear me? You can stump your little butt right on upstairs. But guess what? That's where you're going to be tonight. You're not going with no, I don't know her what his name is. He better not come right back over her. Um, but she said, Oh, yeah, it's okay if you you can go, but I gotta get his license plate number. Girl, some ain't right. I I I I I just don't know. My and she she around like like in our in, in my generation and so I would imagine maybe her mom the same age as my, you know, around the same age, my mom and dad and stuff like that. But my parents would have never. <laughs> His license plate. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. For what? You're not going to go over there. Who coming to pick you up? We don't know them. Uh-uh. And then the people who came to pick up, she said, with five of them in the car, five boys? <laughs> Baby. Mm-mm. How you even know them? My mom would be asking, how you know them? Mm-mm. You know them from where? They go to your school? Mm-mm. Well, we don't know them. So guess what? And it's too many of them in the car. Um, you want me going. <laughs> I don't know them people. <laughs> Girl, you. And, and so when she got in the car, she said, a voice told her she was she this is where the guilt comes in and the shame, right? A voice told her to get out the car and she don't know why she just didn't get out the car. Right. But I think some of that is from her thinking about like, excuse me, that guilt and shame is from like what happened with her god brother, too, you know, <clears throat> because she said she told her friend. It's a lot of dudes in the car. Like, you don't think there's a lot of dudes? And the friend, like, girl, <laughs> the friend, like, girl, okay, like, it is. So, you know, but maybe something like that never happened to her. So she not really thinking like that. But she, uh, even though she don't realize it, she automatically thinking like that because what happened to her before, 